Jesus said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So let's join together as friends, Jesus' friends, to worship and serve the one who, because of his great love, gave his all for us. We've come, Lord, to worship you. You've chosen us to be your friends. You've invited us to extend that friendship to your people in the world. May we live as Jesus lived, serve as he served, and love as he loved, to the glory of your name. And now a, a lovely worship song. Thank you. <clears throat>
Thank you, Beth. Aren't there some lovely images in, in that video? It, it was really, it's really special, I think. I've uh, had a message to interrupt. Margaret is fine. Her family are here. They took her out. I was worried. So that's all okay. And now uh, Alan and Gwen are going to offer us, well, one of them presumably is going to offer us our reading. John 15, 9 to 17, Farewell Discourses. As the fathers loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love hath no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other.
I consider it a great blessing and it calls to mind the words of that lovely hymn the day thou gavest lord is ended that our prayers tonight are being led by sarah from thousands of miles away in mauritius thank you sarah love heavenly father we come before you in prayer we thank you for your example of love, unconditional love. Your love is perfect. We thank you that you're for loving us when we are unlovable to others. Lord, we ask you to help us to show your love in the world. Sometimes we're afraid to step out of our boat and to speak in your name. Give us the courage as you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to be bold as we talk to our friends and the people who have put in our lives. We thank you, Lord, especially for our friends in faith, those who stand by us and pray for us. Father, tonight we pray for India, the people there and the people there. We ask you that, that you lead the, the people in power and draw near those who are suffering. Lord, in these extraordinary times with the pandemic, we feel it's out of our control and out of, our, out of the control of the world leaders. Father, we ask you to give us your peace and we put our faith in you. Give us your Holy Spirit and lead us as we step out into the unknown, as we know you have this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. It, it's, I, I just think it's such a lovely thought that someone in the world is always praying. It, it just, I think it's just awesome. What a friend we have in Jesus. Christ offers us an intimacy with God, an intimacy with God. And there are many examples of friendship with God in the Bible. But this phrase of Jesus is about being friends and not slaves or servants is kind of lit up by a custom 
that was practiced at the, the courts of the Roman emperors and those of the Eastern kings, and indeed, even in the UK back in the 15th and 16th centuries and before. Because at those courts, there was a select group of people who were called friends of the king and or, or friends of the emperor and at all times they had access to the king when others didn't they even had the right to go to the king's bedchamber at the beginning of the day and he would often talk with them before he talked to his generals or his rulers or statesmen they were intimate friends they were trusted the friends of the king had the closest of connections with him jesus our king calls us his friends so looked at in the light of those old customs perhaps we can actually now begin to see how important that is how significant it is because the word friend means so much more perhaps than we generally think of it he's chosen for us that position he's chosen for us that intimacy that closeness even when we like those first disciples have probably not thought or or dared to regard him in that way. What a tremendous privilege that is. It means that we don't need to gaze longingly at God from far off. We are not like servants who have no right to enter into the presence of the master. We're not like someone in a crowd whose only glimpse perhaps of the king will be passing on some state occasion on a horse or these days in a vehicle, but who nonetheless has to pay taxes and serve the king. But rather we are privileged to enter into that metaphorical bedchamber where privilege to speak with him in the most intimate terms about what he wants us to do and indeed we are able to say to him lord help me lord what would you have me do we're allowed not just allowed but welcomed to see what's in his heart to share his joys and concerns. And we are told he will listen to the things that are on our hearts. Those things that excite us and the things that disturb us, that worry us and frighten us. A little story, and it is one I've told before, but it brings a wry smile every time. <clears throat> a man went to his minister and said that he thought the congregation wasn't friendly enough. People weren't speaking to each other enough. The minister agreed with him and said he devised a plan. Always be worried when your minister says they've devised a plan. So during the services on the following Sunday, the minister told the congregation about the concerns and he said that on the following Sunday, they were going to pause the service to allow the, the parishioners, the congregation, to turn to the people behind them and beside them and to speak to them, to say hello or similar. Well, after the service, the man who'd brought this to the minister's attention turned to the woman behind him and he said, good morning. She sat back in horror and said, that doesn't start till next Sunday. 
The truth is that some people aren't ready to be friends with us or with God. But regardless of their choice, we are called to be friends to them. However tough that is, however unwelcome we're made to feel <laughs> when we try, we are called chosen to be friends to them, to act in love, not just to those who love us, but to, to grumpy people too, who don't respond in the same way. God's chosen us to be his friends despite the fact that you and I, at the first, didn't choose him. So let us choose to be friends to others, regardless of what they think or what they do, or even perhaps what they say. But let us too know that a very wise man once said to me, to be a Christian is to reach out in love, but is not to be a doormat. There is a fine line between reaching out in love and abusive love. And I think it's important that that is acknowledged because many Christians live with huge guilt, with a huge weight and a sense that somehow they're not worth anything more than to be downtrodden. That isn't true. We are Christ's children. We are called to reach out in love and in friendship, and he will give us what we need to do that and to bear fruit. Amen. And now, before our our final hymn, let's bless one another in the words of the grace, even though we can't hear one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
his arms, he'll take and shield you. And there you will find what you need. Thank you all so much for sharing this time uh, together. It's been a real blessing. Thank you.